you're welcome to today's class. Um, so today's, in today's class, we're going to be discussing the concept of uh, application software. So in our last class, we actually discussed uh, the concept of system software. If you recall, we defined software to be the set of programs um, that enable um, the computer system to solve a specific task depending on what you are doing at that particular time. So we said set softwares are step-by-step -step instruction and we classify software to be in two categories. We said with the first category is the system software and the second category is the application software. We said an, a, a system software is a system developed to control program execution in the computer system with little or no human intervention. And we did say that we, they are categorizing to operating system and language translators. We actually did look at the functions of operating system. We said an operating system provides us with interface, interface that allows us to, for example, you need to password your system. You, 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 it, it gives you room to be able to enter your password. Or it also provides um, other software management. For example, you want to determine the size of the memory space that is available on your computer system. It is the function of the operating system. Or you choose to um, connect uh, an external device to your computer system. It is the function of the operating system to ensure that there is a proper synchronization between the computer system and that particular hardware that you connect to the system. Then we also looked at language processor. We said language processor basically are softwares that, con that allows users to, um, that allows user source code. And what they do with the source code is that they convert the source code into object or machine code and execute them. Now, we did look at several examples of language processor. We said we have the compiler, the interpreter, and the assembler. We said an interpreter accepts user source code written in high-level programming language. And what they do with it is that they convert those source code into object and machine or machine code and execute them line by line. And as for compiler, we said they are basically software that accept user source code in high-level programming language. They convert those source code into object or machine code and execute them directly. And we said a typical example of programming language that uses compiler is the likes of your C++, your C, and the rest. Then we also looked at an assembler. We said an assembler is a language processor or language translator that converts source code written in low-level language to be more specific, assembly language. So what they do is that they convert this language into object code and execute them directly. So these are some of the things we discussed in our last class. So in today's class, we're going to look at what an application system, or what is an application software, what do they do, what are their functions, and we're also going to look at the various categories of application software. So our content for discussion today is going to be the definition of application software, uh, classification of application software. So at the end of the class, we expect you to be able to define what an application software is. You should be able also to describe the types of application software and list several examples of application software. So we said an application software is a type of computer program that performs specific personal, education, and business function. So it simply means that depending on what you want to do at a particular point in time, there is always a software to help you to solve that particular problem. For example, if I need to send my, a memo maybe to um, my colleague or I need to send a letter to my HOD, definitely I'm going to use an application software that will provide me with such features and such functionalities. Or I need to compute my student result at the end of the semester, I will, there is need for me to use an application software that gives me the room to be able to manipulate those uh, data sets as, that I have, the student's continuous assessment, the, the student final exam score, and also be able to determine the student's class of grade. So these are all application software. As I'm speaking to you, the, uh, the software I'm actually using to even make presentation to you in this particular class is an application software too because it doesn't make any sense for me to give you um, the, 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 my presentation they are all jumbled up in form of text. But because I need to present them to you, so a, a particular application software is there for us that will allow us to make better presentation and it's for better understanding of the, uh, for students to be able to have total grips of the content. And that's why we also use an application software. Or for example, I need to keep your record maybe from your year one to your fifth year. An application software is readily available to be able to do that for us. I want to know what you score in your last exam. I want to know what your grade is maybe in three or in, 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 in maybe in your last final exam. All I need to do is just to query a particular application software and it will be able to display it for me. And those are some of the things that we use application software for. So each program is designed to assist the users with particular process which may be related to productivity, creativity, and communication. So this is what application software does. So 
In a nutshell, an application program or an application software is a software that enables the computer user to solve a specific problem. So we said application software is a program or package that enables computer users to perform specific uh, tasks. Now, so having defined what application software is, there is need for us to also look at what the functions of this application software. So what are the functions of application software? We said application software program create, uh, uh, are created to facilitate uh, a variety of functions, including but not limited to the ones I'm going to um, explain. So managing information. So you need to manage your record. You need to manage your information over time. There's a, all you need to do is to make use of an application software. For example, you go to the university portal. Let's assume maybe somewhere, sometimes in, in the nearest future, when you're in your, five, in your fifth year, and you maybe you apply for a particular uh, scholarship program. And as part of a prerequisite for your qualification of that particular scholarship, they require that you print out your transcript from your year one to that current year. All you need to do is to use an application software that will give you that provision, that will give you that opportunity to be able to retrieve all your information with regard to the course you are uh, studying at, at this particular point in time. So they are used to manage information. Mat manipulating data, if I, for example, if it is that same um, um, transcript, oh, I want to see the number of courses you've, you've had A in the past, or I want to see the number of courses you, your final um, computation score is around 90 and above. All I need to do is to use an application software that will be able to allow me manipulate the existing data. Then constructing visuals. So I want to know, oh, what is my expenses? What has my expenses been over? Uh, as what are my expenses? I want to know, oh, how are my daily expenses? Or I want to know what my monthly expenses are. Then I can actually represent this data in form of visuals, in form of chart, in form of um, um, different chart. It can be a pie chart. It can be um, uh, an histogram and the rest so it allows for constructing visuals so and that's what an application software can also do and for us coordinating resources an application software allow for coordination of resources for example um maybe i'm into production i want to um i know i need xyz amount of um raw material i need xyz amount of um uh, maybe gas to to fuel uh, to power my machine i need xyz amount of staff so an application software called Enterprise Resource Management can actually manage or coordinate all these resources that are required in our production line. Then calculating figures. Yes, application software allow you to do some calculation. For example, you want to know, you want to compute an, an organization payroll. You want to know what the monthly earnings of in the, some employee in a specific organizations are. For you to compute their um, monthly earnings, which is the net pay that gets into their bank account, it simply means that you need the gross pay, you need some allowances, you need to know the, the, um, the amount of percentage that is allocated to each of these allowances. So an application software readily, uh, is readily available that will be able to solve this particular problem and, and more. So now what are the categories of application software? So the first category, there are a lot of categories for, depending on your domain. So say application software can be categorized based on usage and domain uh, of application. So the first category is what we call the word processing, allows us to be able to manipulate text. The second category is electronic spreadsheet that allows us to be able to manipulate figures in form of rows and column. Then we have the presentation software. It allows me, as, I, as I'm speaking to you, to be able to present uh, the lecture note to you. And that's what the presentation software uh, gives us. Then you have the graphics. The graphic software allows you to be able to visualize image allows you to be able to have better representation of image and that's what graphic software does for us then we have database management database management allows us to be able to keep records over time then we'll have web browser that gives you the room to be able to access the internet to be able to access resources on the internet for example you want to check your um, semester results so and the university pr uh, policy is that all students are expected to check their semester results using the online platform so all you need to do is to have a browser or a web browser installed on your either on your smartphone or on your computer system that browser will give you the ability to be able to access the internet so as long as you have inter -connect, internet connection on your system then you have enterprise software enterprise software allows us to be able to manage resources manage individuals manage tax in general and that's what this enterprise software does for us so we're going to look at these um, categories of software one after the other so the first category is what we call the word processing software so it is used to format or manipulate text, thus creating memos, letters, and documents. So we use the word processing software to create letters, to write memo. Even, for example, you need to write 
maybe you send your CV to an organization or you 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 went through one of the national dailies and you find out that oh a particular organization is requesting uh, for um, a kind of skill set that you have so the first thing you need to do is to prepare your CV your curriculum vita and a particular software that allows you to prepare that particular curriculum vita is what we call the word processing software so word processing software is also used to format and beautify your text yes you can give different font style to your to your text you can even give different background color to your text depending on what you want to do you can insert um, some clip charts some little images into word processing software so it provides you a whole lot of features such as spell checker grammar checker tarot synonyms and antonyms for example you are typing and you are not too sure if you are grammatically correct but the word so process word processing software have a spell checker or grammar grammatic checker embedded in it so if you are typing and it's your grammar are very are wrong so what you get to see in 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 the word processing software word processing software is that you see a red um coloration on under the text it simply means that no if it is if it is for spelling if it is spelling you get to see red coloration it simply means that there's a problem with your spelling now if it is grammatic error you get to see a green coloration telling you that you need to fix your grammar and what processing software have these features embedded in it that allows you to do spell checking and grammar checking as well then what processing software also have give you the privilege to change words for example you want to know the synonym of a particular word you want to know the antonym of a particular word so it gives you this leverage to be able to manipulate your text as the case may be then alongside with other features that are stated in word processing software you you have typical examples of word processing software to be the likes of your microsoft word i'm sure a whole lot of you use you have word perfect you have word star you have word libra open of, uh, office word etc now word processing software also have give you the privilege to be able to change your font size change the font size change the font style and the rest and even color insert colors into your into into your um uh, document so the word processing software give you that ability to be able to manipulate your text and that's what processing software that's what word processing software does for us then uh, another type of um spreadsheet uh, um of application software is the electronic worksheet so we said the electronic worksheet or electronic uh, spreadsheet software is used to perform calculation so basically they are worksheet that allows you to manipulate data in form of rows and column so as long as those data set are in form of rows and column then you can easily make use of your electronic worksheet for example at the end of the semester i want to know the number of students that score a in my part in cse 200 all i need to do is to use a function that is embedded in electronic worksheet then maybe a function like count if so it will count the number of students that score a and the rest of the grade for me or i want to have a visual representation of the performance of the student then an electronic worksheet will, will allow me to insert chart into my um into my worksheet itself so these are some of the things the electronic worksheet does for so in this software data is stored in the what table format like i said it is in rows and column so the intersection area called the cell are separated to define fields such as text date time and number now what is a cell it said a cell is the intersection of a role and a column now each of those cells in, a, in an electronic worksheet is referenced by an address so each of those cells is referenced by an address for example you could have cell 25 it simply means that the cell the the the, the column heading is c and the role label is five and that so since we've defined it to be the intersection of a role and a column then it simply means that the cell the address of that particular cell is c5 now electronic worksheet also have embedded functions in them embedded functions such as that will, or you could simply call it formulas so for example i want to do something that has to do with summation all i need to do is to use the function sum oh i want to determine the class average i'll use the function average oh i want to determine um um the grades of my student i'll use the if function because it allow me to test the upper limit of each of those grades for example if it is if a student score a you agree with me that the upper limit for the grade a is 100 and the lower limit is 70 so the if function allow me to be able to to do that so spreadsheets are used for comparing um mortgage interest rate preparing budget and tracking business so you can also use them to track whether you are actually um profiting from your business or you are losing so that's what spreadsheet allows us to do so basically they allows us to manipulate data that are in form of rows and columns so a typical example of spreadsheet application could be the likes of microsoft excel lotus one two three spss which is which stands for statistical package for social sciences 
you have eView, Libra Excel, you have OpenOffice Excel, etc. All of these are spreadsheet applications. Now, the third category is what we call the database software. So it's the third category of um, application software. Now we said database software allows us to be able to manage, control our data set. So it, they, they enable us to manage our data. And that's what the database software does for us. So database software is used to create and manage databases. Now what is a database? We said a database is a collection of interrelated facts about an object of interest. So for example, I need to create a database of students. Now what are the facts? What are those information? What are those data sets that relate to students? So a typical student is expected to have registration number or student ID. A student will have a name. A student will have will belong to a faculty. A student is will belong to a particular department. Now, for me to aggregate all of this information together, I need a database management software. So also known as the database management software. So the DBMS is also known, is, is just an acronym for database management software. So it helps you to organize your data. So when you run an application, data is fetched from the database modified uh, modified and stored back in what in the database so for example if i have records of my student from year one to year five and and i want to know the number of students that score maybe a in system analysis and design or i want to know the number of students that score a in um in um computer application exam at the end of computer application examination all i need to do is to query the database management software so i can say okay select from the student table where student score is greater than or equals to 70. So I need to pull all the names of the students that scored A in that particular course for us. And that's what the database management software is able to do for us. So a typical example of database management software is what we call the Oracle. You have MySQL, you have Microsoft SQL uh, Server, you have uh, PostgreSQL, uh, MongoDB, and IBM DB2. So these are all common examples of database. A typical example that we all use in our day-to-day -day activity that comes with Microsoft Office Suite is Microsoft Access. So if you have a computer system, a system that has Microsoft Word, Microsoft PowerPoint, it, it, a database application software that is embedded in that particular system with Microsoft Access. And you can do a whole lot with Microsoft Access as well. Then the next example of um, application software is the presentation software. Like I said earlier on, is the presentation software that allows me to be able to present my class to you guys today. So it allow me to present my thoughts, my idea, so to you guys, and that's what the presentation software gives us. So we say presentation software enable you to put forth your thoughts and ideas with ease and, and with good clarity by usual and uh, by using visual information. So for example, in my previous class, you find out that I've I inserted image in some of the slides that we have presented in the past. And why am I able to do that? Because it is with the help of the presentation uh, software. It lets you display the information in form of what slides. So in your presentation software, the, the, the environment where you tend to uh, bring forth your ideas, your thought, you have to do that on the slide. And you can insert as many slides as possible in your presentation software. So you can make your slide more informative and more engrossing by adding text, images, graph, and videos. So for example, I could choose to insert some video into my into my slide, or I could choose to insert images like we've seen in our previous slide. So, and what do we do with these images? So these images allows us to present our thought. For example, if I am discussing something that has to do with statistics, so it will be better off I have image that will come in form of a chart, in form of a graph. So, and that's also, you can insert graph, uh, graphics, you can insert text, you can insert video and multimedia. So slideshow to display the information. So at the end, at the point of your presentation, since if you are able to come up with your slide, now to present it to your audience, then you need the slideshow functionalities as it is showing to you as we speak. So all this information I'm um, putting forth to you guys is based on the fact that I've represented my thought on a, slide, on a slide and I'm presenting it in the form of a slideshow. So examples of uh, presentation software are the likes of your Google Slides, Microsoft PowerPoint, uh, Keynote, and then slide bin. It, so these are all application software. So they allow you to bring forth your thought, your idea in form of a slide. And then you use the slideshow to present it to your, to your audience. Then we'll have graphic software. So we said graphic software allow you to edit or make changes to a visual data or images. 
So I'm sure you will have come across all sort of images or all sort of um, graphics uh, information on the internet. At times, you find that graphics information is showing um, a tiny individual and lifting uh, an object that is even weigh more than 10,000 kilograms. Well, you assume, ah, oh, is this possible? But it, all is just graphics. All is just image manipulation. And that's what graphics does for us. It comprises illustration and picture editor software. So in a graphic software, you have the illustration component and the picture editor component as well. With graphic software, visual information is more what compelling. Yes, you see, they are more compelling. They, they are appealing to you because you get to see everything in details. And that's what graphic software does for us. So graphic software helps in um, comparing data, spot trend, and make decision. So if, if, if certain information, if you have a text, maybe the text might be a number-based text, and, and you need to represent them or to, for it to be meaningful, for it to be presentable to, to your audience, it's better you use a graphic software. So, and the graphic software will bring them to you in form of um, chart, in form of views, and the rest. And that's what graphic software does for us. So they allow us to be able to present our information in a more compelling uh, way. So examples of graphic software are the likes of your Adobe Photoshop, CorelDRAW, Microsoft Paint, and Picasa. So all of these are graphic software because they have components that allow you to manipulate your picture and also edit um, those um, images or those graphics as, as the case may be. You can even insert text into your graphics um, um, images or for example, you want to um, display um, maybe your grade at the end of the semester. What do you do? You take a screenshot and if it's blood, with graphic software, you can actually you can actually make it to be more uh, visual. You can make it to be more compelling that people will say, oh, wow, this is good. So, for example, you snap a picture of yourself and you can use graphic software to, to insert a new background to it and it looks as if maybe you are in, um, you are in a beach or you are in front of CBN. But, but you actually snap that picture in, at the comfort zone of, at your own comfort zone, maybe somewhere in your room. So, but with graphic software, you can do all of this manipulation. Then we have the web browser. Like I said earlier on, I said the web browser gives us a gateway to the internet. So it allows us to be able to access information or resources that are on the internet. So these software applications are used to browse the internet. So the, the software enables computer users to locate and retrieve data across the web. So they, they allows us to be able to retrieve information from all sorts of websites that are readily available. They allows us to be able to uh, even upload our images. So a typical example could be the likes for you to be able to access uh, your Facebook account. So you need a web browser. For you to be able to check your Gmail account, you need a web browser. For you to even be able to check your result at the end of the semester, you need a web browser to be able to access those resources that are uh, available on the internet. So a typical example of web browser are the likes of your Google Chrome, Internet Explorer, Firefox, Microsoft Edge, Safari, and Opera. So all of these are web browser because they give us that privilege, that leverage to be able to access the internet. And, and when we get to the internet, we'll be able to access the resources that are readily available on the internet. Then we'll have the enterprise software. So like I said earlier on from, from my introduction, I said an enterprise software allows us to be able to manage resources, manage personnel, manage tasks as the case may be. So, and that's what they do for us. So we said enterprise software is a term used to describe application and technologies that companies use in order to support their operational and strategic initiative by focusing on all organization rather than single user. So companies use this enterprise software to manage their employee, to manage their raw material, to manage their resources, to even manage tax. If, it's, if a company is embarking on a project, you need an enterprise software to be able to manage those project tax, schedule uh, activities, schedule tax for individuals, so, or come up with a Gantt chart that, pro that shows the activities and as well as the days of delivery and the resources that will be required to, uh, to deliver on that particular task. So, and that's what enterprise software does for us. So we said enterprise software help companies store, manage, and use data regarding their daily, daily and regular processes. So if it is on a, if it's on a production line, you need an enterprise software to manage all your production. So soft, uh, the software keeps track of a wealth of information, including payroll, uh, raw materials, business commitment, purchase order, and capacity for what production. So it manages every resources that are required for you to deliver the best to, to your customer. So examples of um, enterprise software could be the um, for customer 
resource, you have customer resource management. For example, those in telecom, they need the CRM to actually know what their perception, the perception of their customer to based on the kind of service they provide. For example, those in telecom also want to do, if they want to embark on customer retention strategy or they want to uh, improve their retention strategy, they will definitely need the customer resource management um, enterprise software. Then you have enterprise resource planning. Yes, if you want to embark on a project, you need this particular uh, ERM, uh, ERP, which enable you to be able to plan and manage your resources very well. And you also need business intelligence that give you insight as to where your project is going, um, if it's going to be able to deliver on its promise. And these are some of the things enterprise resource, uh, enterprise software actually do for us. Okay, so that marks the end of our, our class. But before we go, let's take some of our, um, we'll do the usual way to evaluate uh, our discussion. So, so the first question is, the software design uh, designed to perform a specific task is known as what? So the first option is synchronous software, uh, package software, application software, and system software. From our definition, we say system application software are software that are designed or developed to enable computer users to perform specific tasks. So I'm sure your guess is as good as mine. So uh, the response to this particular uh, question, it will be what? Application software. Now the software that has the ability to manipulate data stored in rows and column is known as, we said it is an electronic spreadsheet. So we said an electronic spreadsheet has the capability to be able to manipulate values or data that are represented in rows and column. And on our slide, we said they have the ability to manipulate data that are stored in a table format. So Google slide and PowerPoint are classified as presentation software. They are classified as presentation software. Now, the software that is used on a daily basis for planning, allocating, and managing company resources is, class, is called what? Enterprise software. So we just discussed that they are called enterprise software. Now, the software that gives com uh, computer user access to the internet is known as what? A web browser. It's known as a web browser. And a typical example of web browser could be the likes of your, uh, your Google Chrome, your Opera, your Safari, and the rest. So that marks the end of our quiz. Okay, so it's a recap of what we've discussed so far. So in this class, we've defined application software uh, to be software that we use to solve everyday tasks. Then we said word processing software are used for typing memos and letters. Then we said presentation software allow for the manipulation of text, images, and as well as video. Then we said an electronic spreadsheet that allow data to be manipulated in form of rows and columns is known as um, electronic uh, worksheet. Then we said enterprise software help companies store, manage, and use data regarding their daily and regular processes. So all of these and more are what we've discussed so far. So with, with graphic software, uh, with graphic software, visual information are more what compelling. Graphic software uh, like Adobe, um, Adobe Photoshop, CorelDRAW. So the visual representation of your image are more compelling. They make them more attractive to users. So that marks the end of our class today. So till I come your way next week, thank you. Stay safe and take care of each other. Bye-bye.